Hi and welcome. Today I will be discussing the Matthews correlation coefficient. The Matthews correlation coefficient is a performance metric that's quite more complex than the other performance metrics that I have discussed before, such as recall, precision, F1 score, and accuracy. All these performance metrics are for classification algorithms in machine learning. I'll make it available here on the top of the video as a card a playlist on these different performance metrics that I have discussed before in the channel. My name is Felipe, this is the Data Science Bits channel. Please subscribe and click on the bell button to receive notifications with every video that I post and follow me on LinkedIn. As I said, the Matthews correlation coefficient is quite complex and is often said that it's better than accuracy for unbalanced distributions. So let's review what's the confusion matrix that has the four elements that define both accuracy and the Matthews correlation coefficient. I'll make available here on the top of the video again, the specific video for accuracy, and also in the end of the video, and you will find this also as a link in the description of the video. So let's take a look at the confusion matrix. The confusion matrix has the actuals against the predicted, uh, just reminding that usually people represent as zeros and ones, and they call the zero as negative class and the ones as positive class. When the actual zeros coincide with the predicted zeros, you have the true negatives. When the actual ones coincide with the predicted ones, you have true positives. Anything outside of the diagonal are the errors and they are false negatives and false positives. The accuracy basically, using the same colors as in the confusion matrix, is basically the true negatives and true positives here on the numerator over the sum of all elements of the confusion matrix. And this is basically the total number of records, the total number of examples that you have in the data set where you are measuring your performance metric, in this case, the accuracy. The Matthews correlation coefficient has a more complicated formula here. It's often called MCC. You can notice a few differences here. Where you had a sum in the numerator of the accuracy, now you have a multiplication. And you don't only have the true positives and true negatives in the numerator, you also have this term subtracted by the multiplication of the errors. So, another thing is that in the numerator, you have already the four terms of your confusion matrix. About the denominator of the MCC, you shouldn't care so much about it because it's just a normalization constant that's always positive and it will make this value, the overall MCC value, be between minus 1 and 1. In the accuracy it was the same, the denominator is responsible to keeping the accuracy between, in this case, 0 or 1. Let's take a look at the limits of the Matthews correlation coefficient when it's minus 1, when it's 1 and when it's 0. The first case is when you have the terms in the diagonal, the product of the terms in the diagonal equals the product of the terms in the off diagonal, outside of the diagonal. And remember that the numerator of the MCC is this term minus this one. So you get zero in the numerator. As I said, the denominator is always positive. In this case, it is not zero. So you end up with an MCC that's equals zero, exactly zero. Next, uh, when the terms in the diagonal are positive and different from zero, and the off-diagonal terms are equal zero. In this case, you get an MCC like this. If you simplify this formula, you get exactly one. Next, the anti-diagonal um, confusion matrix. When you have the diagonal of the confusion matrix equals zero, and non-negative terms outside of the diagonal. So this is zero, this is zero, and the off-diagonal is not zero. In this case, it's easy to see that it will be negative. Uh, and if you simplify this formula, you get exactly minus one. So it's obvious now that the MCC varies from minus one to one. And you can notice now that because the accuracy is between zero and one, you are already getting more information out of the MCC than compared to the accuracy. Because the MCC is able to tell you when you have the extreme case of an anti-diagonal confusion matrix. Now let's take a look at the distribution of the actuals and how moving the threshold will change the MCC values 
and as compared to the accuracy, the recall, the precision, and the F1 score. As usual, let's go to the website to check the plots that I prepared. This is the address of the website, you can go here, I will provide the link in the description of the video. If you scroll down to the last section, in this case here today, the Matthews correlation coefficient, you have for balanced distributions and for unbalanced distributions. First, let's take a look at the balanced distribution, that's the simpler case. So in this case, you have two distributions, they have 1000 examples each, they cross here, you can identify the true negatives, false positives, false negatives, and true positives, the four terms of the confusion matrix by their colors. Uh, and this is for a specific position of the threshold. When we move the threshold from zero to one, from left to right, we get the curves on the right side here. So thresholds vary, varying from zero to one. The recall decreases, the precision increases, so they have a kind of trade-off, and where they cross, in this case of balanced distributions, you have the maximum of the F1 score here. The accuracy has a similar behavior, but it coincides with precision here at zero. It increases until a maximum that in this case is close to the maximum of the F1 score, and it decreases until it stabilizes here. So we can already notice that the overall value of the MCC is much lower than the accuracy already. Also, in the extremes, they are very close to zero. This is good because this means that this performance metric, the MCC, is underestimating or subestimating the values where you have threshold near zero and threshold near one. These are the trickiest uh, positions of the threshold. Let's take a look now at the unbalanced distributions. In this case here is 1000 examples for the actual negatives and 100 examples for the actual positives. Again, you move the threshold and you obtain the curves on the right. In this case here the accuracy reaches a maximum and then it becomes constant and the value is really high here on the side of the curve near threshold equals 1. The F1 score and the Matthews correlation coefficient in green here, they are very close to each other. They have similar maximum positions. And it's clear here that the accuracy is actually tricking you in this region. It's making you believe that the model is really good here in this region, while the Matthews correlation coefficient is strongly suppressed here in this region. And that's the reason for a joke on LinkedIn last week by deepkafa.ai that all the performance metrics are cutting the cake of unbalanced distributions, that they are really happy, they are doing it, and the accuracy is really faking, that's cutting, and it's tricking you. Okay, that's all that I wanted to say about the MCC, the Matthews correlation coefficient. It's a really complex subject, really. I simplified it a bit. I focus on the formula and on the behavior of the curves when you move the threshold. I think this is a really good way to compare the different performance metrics. Remember that choosing the performance metric really depends on your business problem. As I already discussed for accuracy, the MCC should be used when your negative classes and your positive classes all have the same importance for you in your problem and also the True negatives, the true positives and false negatives and false positives all have equal weights in your problem. And now we know that the MCC is really better than accuracy. So for problems where people traditionally use accuracy, you should think about using Matthews correlation coefficient instead. Or at least compute both and compare them, understand what we are doing, understand the results of your model. I hope you enjoyed this video. This ends the series of performance metrics for classification algorithms. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to follow me on LinkedIn. See you in the next video.